Well, thank you for joining our circular conversation, Jane from Corio. Um, do you want to start by telling us a bit of background about your business? Um, yeah, when it was founded, how, by who, what kind of work are you active in? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me, Lauren. So hi, everybody. I'm Janie Morris. I'm co-founder and chief operating officer of Corio. And I love our inception story because I started this business with my sister from our bedroom floor, well, her bedroom floor back in 2017. Ash has a background in environmental health science. And I was actually a nurse for a lot of years before 2017. And we were having a very frank conversation as sisters do about the state of the world. And I, Ash was rabbiting on about all the challenges she was facing from, she was seeing in a professional context from an environmental and economic standpoint. And, you know, being the fairly practical one, I was like, I stopped her and I was like, well, what are you going to do about it? And she talked to me about the circular economy and how she thought it could be kind of the antidote to a lot of the challenges she was facing. And I agreed, but again, being really practical, I was like, sounds amazing but what does this you know what does the circular economy actually look like in practice how does a local government or a small business take this model and do something meaningful with it and we really struggled to find any demonstrable examples in Australia back in 2017 a couple of people organizations were talking about it but there weren't a lot of people trying to do anything with it so being very bold and ambitious we decided we would so for six months we worked with 45 small businesses on one city street, implementing, implementing a range of different circular economy concepts. You know, our understanding of circular economy back then pales in comparison to what it does now. But we started with things that were really tangible to the businesses, like resource efficiency, energy, water, waste. We diverted all of the coffee waste from the street, all of the food waste from the street. We diverted all of the cardboard. We implemented the single-use plastic packaging ban, you know, things like that. And gradually, as we built trust and rapport, with the businesses on that street, we were able to tackle things that are a lot more systemic, like thinking about reverse logistics networks and asset sharing amongst the businesses. Obviously, circular economy is systemic, but we get to work a lot with the top end, so our metals and mining organisations. We work a lot in the built environment, so on some of Australia's largest urban renewal projects and some city shaping projects. And then we also work a lot with government here in Australia, both state and local. So. That's a snapshot of who we are and what we do. It's very impressive for such a small team, like seven people. So you mentioned your role as, as Chief Operating Officer, but maybe you could give a bit of background as how, how does a Chief Operating Officer operate within a circular economy business? What kind of things are you um, responsible for? What challenges do you, do you face? I love that question. I've never been asked it before either. And I think, you know, coming into this business, neither Ash or I had run a business before. So... When you're such a small team at the start, you divide up things purely based on who's less shit at it, if I'm honest. But as we've grown and we've found our kind of natural strengths, you know, Ash is incredibly visionary. She's very bold. She's a brilliant leader, whereas I'm a brilliant executor of Ash's vision. So for the longest time and still today, you know, my primary function is executing on the vision that Ash establishes for us and making the wheels turn. But amongst the the operating requirements of making Corio run quite smoothly, I should hope. You know, I also have a really large role with our clients. So I lead most of our built environment work here at Corio and also our education portfolio and some of our more interesting projects that we're starting to dabble in, including in the fast moving consumer goods space with L'Oreal and also with the South Australian Film Corporation. Um, looking at film production, which is very exciting, also super challenging. <laughs> yeah, so you do work across a, a range of industries. Maybe you can go into a little bit about the, the diversity there um, and if you've noticed any interesting patterns or changes, um, patterns that run through like disparate businesses, but all linked through similar problems that they're trying to overcome. We're really fortunate that we do work across such a variety of industries. And we've always said that we're industry agnostic pardon me and for us the technical experience and the expertise it lies within these companies our job is to come with deep experience and knowledge on the circular economy and overlay that and really complement it with their skill sets you know one of my favorite sayings maybe it's a cliche maybe not but in a circular economy you know it's a really it's a task about letting go of old answers and asking new questions which I think is really important yeah that's really valuable um information and way of like cross communicating between industries like you said industries they they work quite in a silo they don't necessarily know like what happens to their product or their raw material or 
So to be able to connect those dots is so critical for a successful circular economy to like plug the gaps and match make. It's hard. It's really, it's really hard. And you've got to get such a decent alignment on values. And to be able to do that, you need to have honest and transparent conversations about what you value and not being shy about, you know, like if it's profit, then say it's profit because we can work with that. We know that, you know, if it's demonstrating social value or keeping your license to operate, great, we can work with that, but just be transparent about it. But what I've seen, I think, is it, it starts really tentatively when you're working with these big organisations who, who typically don't work with each other. You know, they're two ends of a supply chain. They're a producer of a product and they're a buyer of a product, but usually there's like a fabricator, a manufacturer, logistics people in the middle. And so I think what I've seen that's really encouraging these collaborations is that one organisation will like say something and then they'll see the excitement and then that this other organization they actually want to participate because it's in their best interest to procure these low carbon product that a is manufacturing yeah i mean the biggest businesses hold the most power but they're often they it's it's harder for them to make the biggest changes and the you know the first steps because they're such rigid organizations often like like you mentioned people state saying statements like it was always done like this um, they might not want to do it like that still, but to be able to, to be a bit vulnerable and figure out like, what do we need to change and how do we get there? Yeah. Sometimes the size of the business is a barrier as well. You yeah. know, like some of the organizations we work with are several hundred thousand people. And so you can have a, a motivated person or team, but even then it's like making sure it goes all the way up. You mentioned education, um, briefly um, I know that Courier are super active in education and community driven projects has this always been central to your business approach well yeah for sure we worked out really early on that most people had no idea what we were talking about so <laughs> you know like in order to to be able to like effectively create change toward a circular economy people had to first understand what it was and we really struggled to find any engaging uh courses or ed engaging learning opportunities for people so we decided we would try and create one you know we realized really early on that we're a small business a small company we've only ever wanted to be a small company and so if we can catalyze more action and create more circular economy leaders you know that's a really effective way for us to scale I don't find my job hard when I think about education or even trying to enter power empower or inspire people on that note then I can ask you what's what's keeping you optimistic for the future people i'm like a hardcore people yeah I'm, people some people listen to me going that's the problem but i love people and i think there's so much hope when if we can like collectively identify a new narrative like or a new imagination or imagine how we want to live for the future i think it's such a powerful tool that we have moving forward well you very much are at Corio, like the breadth of projects that you have and the areas that you you're involved in, like you say, with education and community and heavy industry. And I think the sentiment and the curiosity is the same about what the circular economy thing is, you know, and there's some misunderstanding, but that's fine. You know, like one of our key mandates is meeting people where they are and then working with from them, not having the expectation that they will or should know anything. So I think the curiosity level is still there and the the enthusiasm to try something different curiosity is a really um a really nice takeaway word thank you thank you Janie for being so honest and open and sharing a bit about um Corio's world and your guys experience of, of the circular economy so far I'm sure you've got many more years ahead of you thank you for having me I I love sharing openly about our journey and things I'm learning and we'll continue to learn looking forward to our um interactive circular design class in October me too <laughs> All right, see you then. Bye.